updating it and overseeing its operations. We can consider them interdisciplinary teams. Interdisciplinary teams of technicians oversee the system and help orient research projects to continue growth, efficiency, and social evolution. In an optimized version of this system, no more than 5% of the world's population would likely be needed to run the show. The more optimized and powerful our technology and methods become, the more that number decreases. They would simply work in scientific fields relevant to the functionality of society. Of course, many who hear this often ask, what about democracy? How do I participate in this system? Do we elect the interdisciplinary teams? In a resource-based global economy, the traditional concept of politics, elections, and the like has no relevance or basis. While this notion scares a lot of traditionally minded people, it must be reiterated that our problems in life are technical and are relative only to humanity as a whole. We must also face the fact that so-called democracy in today's world is a complete illusion. It always was. People think they have choice in our current system because they can press a button on a voting machine and put some pre-selected person into power. Once that person is in power, the public then has no say. Did you vote for the space program? Did you vote for the cabinet of a new president? Did you vote for the tax cut? Did you vote for where highways or power grids go? Did you vote for the war in Iraq? No, you didn't. The traditional concept of a participatory democracy is a cruel joke. The game has been used to give the public the illusion of control for countless generations, while the distorted monetary powers at the top continue to do whatever they please. There never was a true democracy in any country in history, and there never will be as long as the monetary system is in operation and scarcity is perpetuated. So then, how would a person participate within a resource-based economy? Well, how would you define participation? True participation in society would entail understanding how society technically worked, and then constructively proposing ideas or innovations to be implemented, created, or altered. The first thing a person would do is interact with the central database, which, as denoted before, would come in the form of an internet web page that every person on the planet has access to. They would then input their proposal. The central database, with its historical knowledge and full integration of all scientific fields, would then analyze the concept for its scientific and technical integrity, along with optimizing the materials required, if necessary, based on current understandings and availabilities. If the proposal is initially accepted by the central database after it examines it for its basic integrity, it would either immediately be put into production, such as would be the case for desired invention, or it would be turned over to the interdisciplinary teams that oversee the implementation of the new proposal and orient it into the system. The person who submitted the proposal would then become a part of the interdisciplinary team relevant to the idea. These teams would not be fixed, but constantly revolving based on who wants to participate in a given field and what they have to contribute. This is a true election, based on what a person has done, not what they say they will do. Furthermore, the public's fear of traditional corruption will have little basis, for there is no reward for it. The interdisciplinary teams do not get paid in any way, for their world views have been expanded to realize that their reward is, in fact, the fruits of the society as a whole, and they contribute because it benefits them directly. While this might sound difficult for those who have been fully indoctrinated into the monetary-based reward system and feel that money is the only incentive there is, let it be known that every day all over the world millions of humans volunteer for the greater good. In a 1992 released Gallup poll, more than 50% of American adults volunteered with no pay for social causes at an average of 4.2 hours a week for a total of 20.5 billion hours. This is an incredible triumph for the collective human spirit, for even with the sickness of narrow self-interest generated by the monetary system, humans still strive to help each other and give to society without reward. In the future, those who choose to work in the cybernated industrial system will do so because it is an honor to serve humanity. They will understand that it is in their self-interest in the broadest way to see to it that humanity lives and works together for the greater good. The reward in a resource-based economy would be the continual improvement of society for all. So, participation is open to everyone because all issues are fundamentally recognized as technical. 
The degree to which a person contributes is based simply on that person's education and the ability to create and problem solve. This is why expanded, relevant education is critical. In society today, the public is always kept uninformed and as dumbed down as possible. This way the government can maintain control. In a resource-based economy, the goal of the educational system is to produce the most intelligent and aware human beings as possible. Why? Because everyone then has a greater possibility of contributing, greatly affecting our collective social evolution for the better and improving the lives of all. Now, due to the importance of this section, let's recap what we have discussed. Who makes the decisions in a resource-based economy? No one does. Decisions are arrived at by the use of the scientific method, utilizing computers that gain real-time feedback from the environment, along with a central historical database of all known technical information and maintained by revolving interdisciplinary teams. The goal is to increase objective decision-making as much as possible. And when we fully accept that our problems in life are actually technical, the merit of this approach is without parallel. In the end, the only real issues for society in the natural world are 1. the production of goods and services that are equally available to all, 2. research projects and educational systems to expand our knowledge, understandings, and applications, and 3. the constant monitoring of the Earth's resources and atmosphere for feedback and possible environmental problems. We could address true threats to humanity, such as unforeseen variables like tsunamis, earthquakes, and disease. The only real problems in life are the problems that are common to all humans. Cities and Lifestyle In this section we are going to extend the tenets of the resource-based economy into one of our most fundamental social inventions, the city, specifically the Venus Project's circular city. We will also discuss how people's lifestyle will change in a resource-based economy, likely with values and goals that are profoundly different from what we see today. In a resource-based economy, the cities are designed to be extremely flexible, allowing for constant upgrades and changes. They are emergent, fully integrated systems designed to evolve like a living organism. Jacques Fresco's innovative, multi-dimensional and circular city designs would use the most sophisticated resources and construction techniques available. However, it requires a fresh start. Trying to fix our current cities are not worth the time, material or effort. It is much less problematic and effective to build newer cities from the ground up than to restore the old ones. The circular city permits the most efficient use of resources, travel techniques, and general functionality with a minimum expenditure of energy. The geometrically elegant circular arrangement is designed to allow for the highest standard of living in the most productive and efficient ways possible. For instance, the outermost perimeter of the city is for nature-oriented recreation, including lush gardens and parks for hiking and any other outdoor activity. The next intersection is the agricultural belt, using outdoor and indoor agricultural methods so food can be grown all year round. Continuing in, eight green areas provide clean renewable energy sources for the entire city. While these energy sources would be region specific, often these methods will include geothermal, wind and solar, while those cities close to water will extend to wave and tidal power. The largest of these green areas is also the residential belt. The residents are constructed by extrusion technology and other methods of high-tech prefabrication. The days of bricks and wood being stuck together are no more. Structures of the future will be near solid units extruded as a whole. All homes and apartment complexes are also virtually self-contained systems. For instance, the outer surfaces of these new structures serve as photovoltaic generators, converting solar radiation directly into electricity. The homes are fire resistant, require little maintenance, and are impervious to water and other environmental influences. Moving in past the residential district are education, science, and research centers, along with production and distribution centers. Automated inventory systems would integrate the distribution centers and manufacturing facilities in a highly coordinated and efficient way. In the center of the city, there is a large dome that contains the central cybernated system, which is the brain and nervous system of the entire city. The core dome electronically controls and monitors the production and distribution of products, while also controlling environmental factors within the system. For example, in regard to the agricultural belt, electronic probes monitor and maintain the soil conditions, including the water table, nutrient allocation, and other attributes. This method of environmental feedback is applied to the entire city complex. 
This way, a balanced load economy can be maintained with overruns and waste eliminated. Waste recycling and other needs are located beneath the surface of the city, always utilizing the most advanced and clean technology. Other city designs would include various land city configurations, total enclosure cities, along with cities in the sea. Regardless, the cities on Earth, in whatever form they take, are all tightly interconnected within a worldwide system. Just as each city has a central organizational dome which functions as the brain, along with its nervous system, consisting of computerized environmental monitoring via satellite and electronic probes, the larger world complex absorbs each city and monitors the broad spectrum of the environment, making sure that there isn't a problem or material resource needed in any of the individual cities, while also regulating larger order processes for all cities and the environment as a whole.